our study, uh, which done with the, my uh, student uh, who already graduated long ago, uh, we looked at the two different communities that have been subjected to a coastal uh, flooding. Uh, the two communities are Miami Beach and Norfolk uh, in Virginia. And we wanted to evaluate what is the contribution of uh, land subsidence uh, to the uh, coastal flooding hazard. So uh, we used uh, satellite data, uh, which is radar from space, it calls SAR or synthetic aperture radar, uh, that has been collected uh, routinely. And uh, we analyzed that. Now, uh, for this uh, area of the Atlantic coast, uh, there weren't at the time many observations. So we relied on data that they were acquired in the 1990s from 93 to 99. And we analyzed that uh, using a uh, method which is called INSA, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, uh, which uh, allow us to see how things change over time. So we uh, analyzed uh, these images uh, both uh, over Miami Beach and over uh, Nofo. And we noticed that uh, there are pockets of uh, subsidence. So this is the uh, places where the, the surface is moving down with respect to the other parts. And these, uh, not everywhere is uh, moving the same. We saw uh, pockets of subsidence both in uh, Miami Beach and in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. So we concluded that these are uh, these pockets in this area, they are the, the area that is sea level rise or the impact of sea level rise on uh, coastal flooding is uh, higher than in other places. So in, uh, in uh, Miami Beach, uh, the subsidence rate was between one and three millimeter per year, uh, which is pretty small. But when we think about it, uh, it accumulates over time, uh, then it can be a few inches uh, over decades. And that where we, was our concern. Uh, so overall, the rates is a millimeter per year, one to three in, in Miami Beach and in Norfolk was a one to, to five millimeter per year. So that was uh, the rate. Okay, so the focus of the study was a land subsidence, uh, which usually occurs over wider areas. Now this technology, INSAR, has been used also to monitor buildings. Uh, and in many places, we see uh, buildings that um, have some cracks or they move. Um, they also show some uh, subsidence. Uh, we've seen that in another study that we studied um, detections of sinkholes in uh, central western Florida. We saw that there were some buildings that uh, moved, and when we went to check over there, we saw that there were some cracks. So it's uh, pretty common in, in Florida and other places around the world that uh, this technology can detect movement of buildings. And in most cases, uh, these buildings uh, just move, and that's what we report. There is no catastrophic uh, uh, collapse, like in the case here in, uh, in Surfside, uh, which was very unfortunate. We, we saw several pockets of these uh, subsidence. Most of them uh, were in the western part of the city where we expected to see subsidence. Uh, there was unusual, uh, this, uh, the pocket uh, we saw in Surfside, uh, which was in the eastern side, which is known to be on a stable part of the city. Uh, over there, uh, we didn't expect to see subsidence. So we didn't pay too much uh, attention to that. We just uh, reported because that's what the data showed. And uh, we said that it's occurred in this building, uh, condominium building that is uh, 12 story high. And uh, we just reported that because the focus of the study was about land subsidence and not uh, trying to analyze uh, building uh, damage or anything like that. So. Uh, 
it's a byproduct of uh, the analysis. We saw movement that happened in the 1990s and uh, we didn't uh, pay too much attention to that. We just uh, reported in the paper. Different, first, what we measure is uh, with this technology is movement of buildings. Uh, because uh, what we turn the signal is a building. So it can be that the, the land itself, where the, the foundation is moving downward, uh, like we see in many other places. That case, if the, the land itself moves downwards, uh, then uh, we have usually it's a broader signal, it's not very localized. Uh, in, in places where the building itself is like moving due to cracks and things like that is a more localized signal. Now, uh, I've studied land subsidence over broad areas like uh, in Mexico City when uh, uh, the entire city or most of the city is being subsided in a very high rate of uh, maybe uh, 40 centimeter a year, which is very large. Uh, and we, over there, we studied uh, like the impact of this very large subsidence on uh, infrastructure, on the, the metro. And by the way, the, the metro station, uh, metro uh, accident that happened uh, a few weeks ago, uh, it's in an area that we identified as a place that uh, is likely to have problem because of the subsidence over there. But in other places uh, where we don't have like the entire uh, area is subsiding, we can have uh, localized subsidence. Uh, this is like in uh, our study of uh, sinkhole detection in, in Western Florida, where the, the area is much more localized and we see the subsidence there in small, much smaller pockets, uh, usually uh, 10 yard, 20 yard, it's the size of a house. So it's, it's individual houses are moving. Uh, so that can be due to the, in case of a sinkhole, the movement is due to movement in the, in the uh, subsurface and uh, can be induced the, the movement. In some cases, it can be just the building is not built properly and it can uh, have cracks uh, because of uh, the problem in the building itself. And then uh, it, it still moves and uh, we can detect it with this technology. Okay, in, in uh, Miami Beach, the, uh, the city is built on barrier island, uh, which has more rocky uh, foundation on the eastern side. And uh, the western side of the city uh, was actually, was wetlands that were actually reclaimed and uh, they built houses on these reclaimed wetlands. So uh, this area of reclaimed land tend to um, subside. So the, the, it's called, the, the process is called soil consolidation. So in this area, uh, since the building was, the city was built about a hundred years ago, we expect to, to see some kind of movement as the, the soil settled and the building on top of the soil also settled. And we have a project now looking at some of the historic data, looking to see what's, what caused that, or if we can measure that uh, process. Uh, so where we have this uh, soil uh, consolidation, we expect to see subsidence. In the Eastern side of the city, where it, the, the buildings are built on, on bedrock, uh, it's less likely to have movements of the building, uh, or, of the ground beneath the building. So that's a, uh, why we didn't expect to see uh, so much or any uh, movement in, along the eastern side of the city. We were a little bit surprised, but we know it can happen, so we didn't pay too much attention to that. Yeah, so the thing is that when we measure, we measure subsidence or movement of a building. So the building, uh, it can, can move uh, due to the, the land or can be due to cracks within the buildings. And there are hundreds of buildings that have cracks and they move. N not necessarily in Miami, but it, I, I'm familiar with many studies that they report on, on cracks in buildings that buildings have been moved. And uh, it doesn't mean that they will collapse. 
so uh, what uh, what happens here is there was some something from the engineering point of view that caused it to collapse. Uh, but what we our study reported that there were some movement in the building, whether it's because of uh, the ground underneath or because of the uh, some failure of uh, cracks that formed in the building in the 1990s. And uh, we didn't have data to, to look afterwards. Uh, it's something that we are working on that and uh, we'll give it a little bit more uh, priority now. Uh, but uh, what we report in that paper is a movement of the ground or of the building on the ground uh, between 93 and 99. And there were more than 20 years afterwards that nothing happened. So it doesn't really always happen. It's uh, many building has cracks. I think uh, what, oh, let me rephrase. Uh, when we measure subsidence, so when we see movement of the buildings, it's worth checking why it happens. Uh, it, we cannot say uh, what is the reason for that. But we can say there was a movement here uh, that caused uh, that was detected by this technology by the satellite images. It's worth doing it. Now I know from our other project in um, in Western Florida uh, that people who have uh, houses and they don't want to know that there is a sinkhole underneath them because it can lower the, the value of the property. Uh, so uh, I think it's important to implement uh, te new technologies that can allow detection of movement and then provide the engineers or people who are in charge to say this, this building shows some movement, you need to check why it happens and if it can be, can cause catastrophic collapse. Uh, from the SALA images, we cannot do it. Uh, we just say there, is, there was some movement over here uh, it's worth checking. Uh, please do that. Okay, I, I would like to say something about my background. I'll show the background. It's part, uh, what we see here is the image of uh, a GPS station that monitors subsidence in uh, here in Miami Dade, it's in Hallover Park. Uh, so it's part of this uh, project that we monitor subsidence. Uh, we use two technologies. One is GPS and the other one is INSAR. And uh, with both of them, we try to see uh, what happened to the ground and how it, our uh, focus is to see how it will uh, help us understand the, um, the hazard induced by sea level rise and the land subsidence and how it impact the coastal uh, flooding hazard. So I just wanted to explain my background. And, uh, this is uh, a slide uh, that explains about uh, synthetic, in informatic synthetic aperture radar, or as we call it, INSA. And uh, what we can see here in this image that uh, uh, a satellite uh, scan the errors, but instead of optical images using radar image, and uh, it takes the, the information and then, uh, after some time, it returns more or less to the same location and uh, takes the image. And when we look, we, we compare uh, the, the image, it's a wave. So the, the radar signal is a wave. Uh, we can see if there were changes. In this case, is a classical example of earthquake. So after there's an earthquake, the, the earth is, is moved. And uh, we can see that the, there is a, a change in the length of one of them. A, it was like here, and B, the green got uh, longer. Uh, so uh, from these changes of a, a few millimeters, centimeters, we can uh, actually map the area and see if there is uh, a motion. So this is uh, what we call uh, an interferogram, uh, which is a map showing the changes of the surface uh, in between these two acquisitions. Now, uh, we do it several times, many times, and when we, we look, uh, see the study of the Miami, Miami Beach area, we use the data acquired by these two satellites, ERS-1 and 2, 
and uh, we used a total of 24 acquisitions uh, between 1993 and 1999. And this is the area, but we focus only on the study in this area of uh, Miami Beach. And this is what we see over here. Uh, so these are the, the velocities that we measure after looking at them. Uh, so we see these pockets that I mentioned, the yellow, these are the pockets, and this is a very concentrated pocket over here in Surfside, but we can see over in the Western part of the city, different pockets where we see subsidence. And, uh, uh, this is the, what we call the uncertainty, how uh, certain we are, or what is the level of uh, certainties that we have. And it varies. Uh, so here we measure between uh, minus uh, four to plus two, and the uncertainty is about zero, uh, one, around one millimeter per year. And uh, when we look at uh, these different points, we see subsidence in the rate of about two uh, millimeter per year. These are the different pockets that we report in the paper. And this is the building uh, that uh, we saw this uh, concentrated and we can see that it's about in the 1990s, it moved at a rate of about two millimeters per year. So uh, we see mostly in the Western part of the city, but this is the only one that we noticed or there's some maybe here uh, in the Eastern part, but this is a concentrated pocket. So that uh, we wanted to uh, we noticed today that uh, this is a building that actually collapsed. So we were very shocked about that. 